Hey, He-Man, can I borrow the sword for a second? Why? Why do you need the sword? No, I just need it for something. Just don't worry about it. You're not going to do anything perverted with it. No, why, why would you assume that? Just want to do something. Don't worry, it's a surprise. All right. <laughs> Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Genealogy. <laughs>
Oh, you know, they had that one good moment, him and his father together, defeating Scareglow and rescuing the souls of their two fallen comrades. Fast forward to the palace where He-Man starts realizing that his father is ill. That's right, everyone. The father does not die in some epic battle. Now he dies of some unknown illness due to organ failure. What? It's a kind of organ failure I've never encountered before, Adam. Now, apparently, the king already knew he was going to die and didn't tell Adam. You knew about this? Why didn't you tell me you were dying, Dad? My guess it was him getting revenge on him for not telling him that he was He-Man. Oh, no. He was like, why didn't you tell me you were sick, Dad? Why should I? You didn't tell me you were He-Man. How do you like secrets being kept from you, son? How could you? <laughs> no, of course, Adam doesn't accept that. He's like, Tila, you're powerful, right? Tila's like, oh, yes, yes, I am. Can you heal him? Save him, Tila. Like you healed me? Like you saved me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot I could do that. And the king said, no, 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 I'm fine. I want to die. Even if she could, I wouldn't let her. What? Why, Dad? What do you want to die? You haven't even found your lost daughter yet, Shira. No, I'm good, son. I'm good with dying. Because you would have done anything in your power to save me, and I don't want that. For some reason, at this point in time, the king still has yet to meet Adora, which, for me, doesn't make sense, as this was supposed to be after everything happened in He-Man, so he would have already known that he had a daughter, but we'll get to her soon enough. You worry too much. Nah, son, I'm good, just let me go. Death comes for us all, my son. <laughs> oh, by the way, before I die, I have to tell you one crucial thing. So there's no real written rule, but I'm just going to guilt trip you into this. If you're going to be the king, you can't be He-Man. As Adam, or as He-Man, because it cannot be both. What? Yeah, yeah, there's no actual written law that says this, but I'm going to give you an existential crisis to mull over in your head. <laughs> Before I go. So you will have to make a choice, son. For my last bit of revenge for not telling me you are He-Man. Yeah, uh, well, thanks. <laughs> Why, Dad? So then the king passes away, and now He-Man has a major decision. Should I be the next ruler of Eternia and give up He-Man, or should I continue as He-Man and abdicate the throne to somebody else? I don't know. What am I supposed to say? Now, of course, this decision is taken from him when Keldor comes out of the blue and says, Then don't accept the crown. Hey, I'll do it. Who said that? Keldor, played by William Shatner, who I always assumed was me, Skeletor, said, I am Keldor, brother of Randor, and the rightful ruler of Eternus. Leave it to me, I'll be the new king of Eternia. What? You were my father's brother? Yes, I was your father's brother, and the crown belongs to me, says William Shatner Keldor. You know who I am. I mean, come on, let's be honest. If Captain Kirk came and said, I've got command. I want to be the captain of Eternia. Well, of course you give it to him. No question that. He's Captain Kirk for crying out loud. I should have said I'm coming to the ship. <laughs> so, of course, Captain Keldor Kirk takes the throne back which He-Man was happy with. I can think of no better man to lead our people. Because now he doesn't have to make that crucial decision. He's like, woo, lucky thing I don't have to actually make a decision here. I no longer face an impossible choice. Long last brother, he's the king now. King Keldor the First! I get to still be He-Man. Yes, win. <laughs> oh, wait a second, I missed a scene. Let's rewind this for a bit. <laughs> There was a scene where I motherboard powered Skeletor, which I forgot to mention, I Skeletor have now joined forces with motherboard. Oh, my exalted one. You know that crazy cult from Revelation that Triclops had started? In the name of robotics, automation, and the holy sprocket. Damn it up your ass, forget this crazy uplink business. Apparently there really is a motherboard, and she's actually pretty evil and powerful, as she was able to subjugate me, Skeletor. Now! With the power of technology and wizardry, I decided to make a preemptive attack on the palace, where I, Skeletor, shot my nano technology at everyone, transforming them into my slaves, or slaves of the motherboard. And who am I stopped by? Well, I'm stopped by Captain Kirk. And everyone's like, wait a minute, Keldor can't be Skeletor. Yes, Keldor's actually helping he man fight off Skeletor. What's the deal here? How can Keldor not be Skeletor? Well, as it turns out, we find out that this Keldor wasn't actually Keldor. This Keldor was motherboard in disguise. So, you know, bait and switch. <laughs> That's when you should have used bait and switch, Kevin Smith. That's right, Kevin Smith at some point in the series actually looked at the camera and said, wink, wink, bait and switch. You're not worthy to win on the 
staff of car. You were nothing more than a bait and switch. That would have been when you used bait and switch, you fool. <laughs> I'm sorry. So during the fight sequence where a big technology monster comes out of the ground and starts fighting everyone, He-Man chases after me, Skeletor, who's like playing catch. Can't catch me, He-Man! Run into a laneway, grab a kid going, Ah! I'm going to transform this kid, He-Man, you hold it right there! Let him go! Which I transformed the kid anyway and then took off. He-Man grabs the kid in his arms and the sword cures the kid of the nanotechnology. So it is now established that He-Man's sword, you know, is a cure to nanotechnology. He-Man, knowing this, ponders, hmm, how can I use this to my advantage? Well, I can't for some reason spread the power of He-Man across the entire Eternia. You have to use the sword on all of Eternia at once. Which is unfeasible. Despite the fact that I, Skeletor, was able to kind of do something like that by transforming everybody in Eternia into mindless zombies, but hey, let's pretend that never happened, right? It's unfeasible. So He-Man then sends Orko off with the power sword and said, here, I don't need this sword right now, you can take it, to go find Gwildor. You know, that little imp creature from the Masters of the Universe film? Oh. Well, they needed to find him so that he could, you know, fix the sword up so that he could project farther using technology. Amplify its reach. I don't know why, if he was going to do that, why he just didn't give it to Andra. I mean, Andra was pretty much a Mary Sue when it came to technology. Take this. No power sword, but activate it when the battle begins. Just hand her, yeah, fix this, Andra. Oh, okay, that's really all he needed to do, because Andra was able to pretty much make everything else pretty easily. Andra makes impressive tech. It's unfeasible. But instead, he sends them off on some cockamamie journey, just so that they can bring in Gwildor into this. There's only one man on Eternia who could do it. I don't like adventures! So then they go off on the journey. He-Man no longer has his sword, but he doesn't need the sword, remember? He can summon the power of Castle Grayskull without it. However, well, that's going on. Tila, feeling guilty that the King's soul doesn't have a place to reside. If I don't restore Pretarnia, what will happen to his soul? Because I did not see the end of Revelation. I just assumed Tila would have already fixed Heavenly Praternia. You know, with a snap of her fingers. Because, you know, Eva Lynn just snapped her fingers and destroyed it. But no, apparently not. So Tila sets off on a journey to seek out the wisdom of Grenamia. To figure out how to bring back Praternia. I mean, she could have just gone to Castle Grayskull. Hooked up to that, I don't know, Castle Grayskull Matrix thing. From the Celestial Egg. Where she can see everything, all the mysteries of the world that I, Skeletor, in the first one, you know, was privy to. The solution to this riddle must lie somewhere out there in the vast reaches of Earth. Am I boring you? But nah, <laughs> she's lazy and derelict of her duties as she decides to leave Castle Grayskull, unattended and undefended, to go seek out Grenomir. I'm the sorceress now. So I should be able to figure this out by myself. Without even telling He-Man, mind you, because this is the one thing that I found bizarre about this, is that she kind of takes off to do this as kind of a, like a surprise to He-Man. Adam needs to know his father is going on to his great reward. So He-Man doesn't even really know that she's doing this. He's just like so starstruck by William Shatner that he doesn't even notice that his girlfriend left Castle Grayskull vacant while she went to go fix a problem that was never hers to be in with. Anyway, so Grenomir says, you don't have the power to do that. You need the power of Skeletor's staff. You need the power of Grayskull and the power of Car for some reason. Which, at this point, is where I yelled at the TV screen. What are you talking about? All Evil in needed was the power sword and the power of Grayskull to do it. Shouldn't all Tila need was to say, hey, He-Man, can I borrow the sword for a second? Why? Why do you need the sword? No, I just need it for something. Just don't worry about it. You're not going to do anything perverted with it. No, why, why would you assume that? I just want to do something. Don't worry, it's a surprise. All right. <laughs> you know, that's all she needed to do. But apparently, no, they concocted this whole side thing with her needing to become the snake princess and all this other stuff. So whatever. But no, she requests that Grenomir helps her. I'm here to ask for help. The legends tell us that Granamir the Magnificent once granted humans access to Ka, snake magic. And who is this little girl who presumes to speak without my permission? And Granamir said, nah, screw that. Well, the answer is no. He's like, well, you know, you're going to die soon, Grenomir. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to need a heaven to go to instead of having a soul wander eternity and then disappearing. And Grenomir says, nah, I'm good. I've already made peace with the fact that my soul shall wander time and space. I don't mind wandering the galaxy. I'm good with that. No, thanks. Okay, <laughs> but alas, she was not alone. No, enter Eva Lynn. That's right, Eva Lynn then chimes in. Ah, he won't help you. Well, you won't get it from me. 
You're wasting your time. Everyone's like, what? Eva Lynn's here? Why is Eva Lynn here? How is this possible? To coin a phrase from Critical Trinker, don't know. She just destroyed an entire plane of existence, murdered a whole bunch of people, created chaos, destruction in Eternia. Why isn't she behind bars at the very least in some dungeon somewhere? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here, Lynn? Uh... It seems that my tampering with the cosmic balance produced some unforeseen consequences. You mean Granamir's condition is because of me? Yes. Ah, there we go. Apparently, her penance for all those evil teens is community service? That's right, everyone. Wait, so you're here to what? Care for him? She's got to take care of an aging dragon as her punishment. Like... A nurse? Now, that might be a punishment if Renamir was like, you know, going to live for another 200 years or so. Evelyn having to change Grenamir's diapers, give him a bubble bath every day, wipe his butt when he uses a toilet. You know, things like that I can see being a punishment for Evelyn. We shall see how your tongue wags. You talk too much! But no, it turns out Grenamir is on his deathbed. I am pending. Demise. So he's like, got what, a week left to live? How the hell is that a fair punishment for her? So Evelyn says, nah, he's not gonna help you. And Sheila says, well, can you help me convince him? Help me convince him. After all, you know, you're the one who destroyed heaven to begin with. Wouldn't that be a more fitting way to make up for the evil you've done? She's like, nah, I'm good with washing the dragon's butthole. <laughs> so she refuses at first. Why? It's not your concern. But my friends, never underestimate the power of guilt, as that's exactly what Teela uses to convince her. Eternia isn't something I can just forget about. Pretty please. After all, if you do well... What greater amends can you make than to help me restore that which you destroyed? You're going to want to go to heaven too, right? Well, you're going to need a heaven to go to as well. Resurrection of Paternia wouldn't just mean salvation for the wandering souls of fallen champions. But redemption for you. Please, pretty please, with gumdrops on top. So Evelyn says, no, fine, I'll help you. <laughs> and so the two of them work together to try to get Grenamia to help them out. Riveting stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Riveting stuff. Yes, very entertaining. This was like, what, one, two episodes into it? I was kind of yawning. The show wasn't winning me over, but it, you know, it hadn't lost me yet either. I was kind of like bored, actually, for the first two episodes. Maybe it started picking up around the third episode. Episode. That's when they introduced Hordak. Wonderful! That's right, Hordak. For uncountable eons, I have spread across the galaxies like a virus. In his fleet of spaceships comes down like Palpatine in Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> and he joins forces with me, Skeletor. So here I thought I was working for Motherboard, but it turns out that Motherboard wasn't the big bad in this. No, it turns out that Hordak was pulling the strings of Motherboard all along. Motherboard was merely an extension of my hand. Which I actually didn't mind the twist. I thought it was actually kind of fun. It was good to see Hordak back. Well, good for me because I was able to thrash him good. Sometimes my power even amazes me. <laughs> yeah, that's right, spoiler alert. I got to defeat that snorting fool who incidentally never snorted once in this series, which bothered me. Trust me, I lived with that guy for years. You could not sleep next to him. He was constantly snoring and snorting. <laughs> It was disgusting. You missed out on that one, Kevin Smith. You should have had him snorting more. I'm sorry. Anyway, as it turns out, that Captain Keldor Kirk was actually me, Skeletor in disguise. I played the part of Keldor. Motherboard played me. And we played all of the Turnier for suckers. I'm the imposter is not to... So I really was Keldor. I was just surprised. Learn the Keldor fiction wasn't fake. So apparently my plan was to take the throne, pretending to be the brother of the king, who I actually was the brother of the king in the first place. I didn't know I was the brother of the king because once I got the power of the staff to become Skeletor, I no longer remember that I was Keldor. Hordak bamboozled you into believing a lie is the truth. And the truth is a lie. But thankfully I had William Shatner's echoing voice in my head. You really are Keldor. Denied the throne of Eternia. After a sound thrashing that I got from Motherboard at some point, which jogged my memory, and now I started to remember. There must be some kind of crossed wire. What's the matter with me? Which this scene was very important, as it had 
no bearing on the story whatsoever, as it didn't change my perspective on any of this. But even though you took the truth from me, I should thank you. I still wanted to do all the things I did before. It just gave me a few extra quips towards the end. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle and things like that. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. It was good for the quips, but really had no bearing on the story whatsoever. Anyway, that distraction aside, after Hordak revealed to me the secret that I owe always Keldor, He-Man decides to have a heart-to-heart -heart with his uncle Keldor. So he's like, what's the plan there, new King Keldor? What would you have me do, my king? Where Captain Kirk Keldor, aka Skeletor, says to He-Man, It's time to take the fight to them. We can either fight off the next attack by Skeletor and his new master, Mother or you can take the fight to them. And he meant, yes, a good idea. I never thought of that. In all the years where I've been fighting Skeletor, I never actually thought to take the fight to Skeletor. I've never seen anything like it before. <laughs> that was a brilliant idea. You're already better than King Randor. You're a fine one to talk. Anyway, so He-Man takes the masses of the universe and they ride off to take down Snake Mountain. However, they never actually get there because Motherboard and Hordak took over Castle Grayskull and blocked off its power from He-Man, forcing He-Man to transform back into Adam. Then he falls like a clumsy oaf. <laughs> So now Castle Grayskull's taken over with the greatest of ease. And you know why that was? Because for some reason, the guardian of Castle Grayskull was too busy trying to impress her boyfriend then, you know, to do her job, which was defend Castle Grayskull. Good job there, Tila. You were on the job for what, a whole month before you let the whole castle get taken over? Oh. Sorry. Anyway, so while the castle's being taken over, the guardian of the castle is still trying to convince a dragon to allow it to have the power to bring back heaven. Please, Lord Granamir, there is no one else alive with the power to help me. So anyway, they managed through a riddle. First, a riddle. To convince Granamir to do it. There's always a damn riddle. A paradox that's blind to mage and king in time. Unlike a snake, the more you take, the more you leave. Behind. The answer's footsteps. So then the power of Khan comes out and infects her, and then Tila becomes the Snake Tila. Snake Princess Tila, or whatever. So now she's got the power of the snake and the power of Grayskull. So we cut back to Castle Grayskull. That is now completely conquered by Motherboard and Hordak. It is as you strategized, my lord. Grayskull is now yours to control. As are the people of Eternia. However, while the castle's being taken over, Tila's lying on the ground talking about boys with Eva Lynn. I'm not even joking. She's already Snake Tila at this point, and she's lying on the ground like this, beside Eva Lynn, going, So are you ever going to tell Adam that you like him? I know love when I see it. Well, Tila goes, hee hee hee. Those things you were saying about me and He-Man, <laughs> they aren't true. No, why would I do that? He's just my friend. Adam and I are just friends. While this is going on, Castle Grayskull is burning. <laughs> There's your new sorceress, everyone. How can he be so cruel? Kevin Smith, I'd just like to say to you, yes, we did say we wanted Tila to be a little more feminine, but we never said transform Tila, a warrior, into a 13-year-old teenage girl at the mall. He's cute. Do you have a brother? Makeup and stickers and ponies in MySpace.com. <laughs> what is wrong with you? We didn't say turn her into legally blonde level of feminine. I object. You know, there's an in-between there somewhere. But I'm all woman. Feel how soft my skin is. I'm sorry. Anyway, so while they're talking romance, Adam is sent to the dungeon. It was at this point that I decided to reveal myself to He-Man. So it's true. You really are Keldor. In the flesh. Our next plan, to vaccinate the entire Eternian population with a vaccine full of nanotechnology that transforms everyone into mindless slaves doing the bidding of Motherboard, which was Hordak's actual plan all along. Subjugation through vaccination. Not only could we inoculate our people against the virus, Hmm, I wonder what Kevin Smith tried to say there. I'm sorry. <laughs> now it's around this point where I Skeletor say, you know what? I'm tired of being a subordinate to these fools. I should rule. Not so long ago it was you who commanded this throne room. 
instead of Hordak's metal mommy. And that's exactly what I did. Just like that. An imposing, powerful motherboard is caught up like I was in Revelation, looking at the mysteries of the universe. So wrapped up in scanning the secrets of this castle, she doesn't even know we're here. She was so caught up looking at the mysteries of the universe that Motherboard, all seeing, all knowing, didn't notice me cut off her head. Pull her plug. <laughs> That's right. But don't worry, everyone. All that happens off screen, so no one gets to see any of that. Nor how it happened, or why it happened off screen. Which a lot of things, really important things, seem to happen that way. After that, I come with a nice jokey smurf present to Hordak, saying, Yeah, Hordak, here's a present for you. Perhaps this small token of my esteem. Laughing like Jokey Smurf. This is when you have your seven moment. What's in the box? Oh, what's in the box? As he opens the box to reveal the head of Motherboard. So, of course, Hordak didn't take too kindly to that present. He would much rather have had a tie. It's not nice to cause trouble for the evil Horde. <laughs> So, this is my favorite part, where I and Hordak duke it out, once and for all. And, again, spoiler alert, I, Skeletor, am victorious, and I become the ruler again. You know, Skeletor, your evil is almost a match for my own. That's right. I, this was probably my favorite part of the show. Not because it was brilliantly written and orchestrated an amazing sequence. It was only due to the fact that, you know, I won. <laughs> and I love to win. <laughs> And I always hated that Hordak, that snorting fool. Erase my memory, will you, you moron? I mean, that was kind of a good battle. But again, there was nothing clever about my win. It was just, you know, it was time in the script for me to get the last blow. Is it time yet? Should I give him the final shot? Sure, okay, here it is. That was one of my issues with this series. There was nothing ever clever about the things that happened. It was just, it was like, at this moment, this needs to happen. And at this moment, this needs to happen. And therefore, it does. For example, back to Gwildor. <laughs> I am Gwildor of Thenor, locksmith and inventor. Who now has the task to transform the power sword into something greater so that it can project its power outwardly? Amplify its reach. Can you do this? I'll do my very best. Gwildor should have said, yes, I can, but I need something first. We need to set on our mission to get this from this so that I can make this, you know? I have to go get this part from this thing that you could only find here so that I can make this happen. Instead, it was like, yeah, sure, no sweat, no problem. I can do it easily. No worries. If it was that easy, anyone could have done it. Why didn't you just give it to Andra? Nope, we have to fight Gwildor. If anyone can calibrate the sword of power, it's you. Because of member berries. Hey, member. Oh, hi, member. <laughs> and there are a lot of member berries in there. So now this is where I, Skeletor, decided it would be fun to go visit my nephew, Adam, who is now in prison in a cell. <laughs> and when I say pay him a visit, I mean taunt him at his lowest moment. <laughs> Look at you, you fool. <laughs> I won both the crown and Thanks to you. I, William Shatner, Keldor, Skeletor, fool you. <laughs> Maybe next time, you know, you should do your research. Better just handing the crown to any guy who just claims to be anyone. Maybe too inviting. Just saying, not a bright move. Tis a pity his son wasn't as wise. <laughs> now back to Tila. Now this is kind of when Tila finally realizes that something is not okay with Castle Grayskull. Look at what Hordak's done to the city. She suddenly starts to feel it. Wait a minute, I can't connect to the castle. Nor He-Man for that matter anymore. Something's interfering with my telepathic link to He-Man. I think the castle was conquered. You know what, Evelyn? I know that bringing back Returnia is very important, but the castle Grayskull has been taken over, and Adam is now in prison, and all of Eternia is in chaos. I think it's about time I go and do my job. Because Eternia needs her sorceress now. Returnia will have to wait. And then Evelyn's like, nah, don't worry. They can handle that. We've got bigger problems. What's really important is Returnia. You need to bring that back right now. That's what worries me. No, there's absolutely no timeline for this. It's not like they said that the king's soul will be roaming around for, you know, about a week, two weeks at most before evaporates. We don't really know a timeline. So it's just like, it'd be a thousand years of his soul floating. We don't know. We know the others have been gone for a long time. So can't be that short of a time. You know, this isn't exactly a pressing matter. But anyway, Evelyn convinces Tila that we gotta get that havoc stuff. You're supposed to be looking. 
find him and retrieve the Havoc staff. And so they set out to find Skeletor's Havoc staff, which is at this point fused to my arm, as I, Skeletor, have become one with both magic and technology. Then we jump back to the taunting Adam in his cell. Doesn't matter anymore, kid, because your dad's dead! Which I have to admit, I always find fun. <laughs> Only I had an extra top this time, as I caught her mother, I guess, trying to sneak in and tossed her in the cell with E-Man. There you go, Marlena. There's your son. You can have a family reunion in the cell. And me, Keldor, as your uncle, will join you. Turkey dinner, how is it? Hmm. Well done. Magic has certainly sharpened your appetite. <laughs> so, I'm done my taunting and I leave. And of course, this is where you got that heartfelt moment between the queen and her son, where he's like all down on himself going, I can't believe I let this happen. Maybe if I had the sword, it could break through the interference the virus is creating. But he gives them some cliche stuff like, The sum total of your power doesn't come from some lightning bolt over Grayskull. Love and the willingness to fight for what matters. This was the one running thing that really kind of made me nauseous throughout this entire season, and that was the amount of cliched, follow your heart speeches that Adam got throughout this whole thing. I think I counted like four or five similar follow your heart, look in your heart speeches, you know, to boost his morale. It's not about what you hold in your hand, but what you hold in your heart. Adam always had more heart than anyone in Eternia. Some total of your power doesn't come from some lightning bolt over Grayskull. Love, and the willingness to fight for what matters. You've become your own man. And you have more courage than anyone I've ever known, Adam. I mean, even at times he told him to follow his heart. You'd think he was a camera. Listen to your heart, and you'll find the truth. Maybe he is a Care Bear. <laughs> I don't know. Caring can do wonders. It wasn't his heart that got him in trouble. It was his brain. It's true. His brain was the one not working. He was following his heart when he gave Keldor the crown. The point is, I acted without thinking. I think at this point, everyone should be like, you know what, E-Man? Stop following your heart. Your heart is stupid. Follow your brain for once. You played me. Anyways, this is also when Andra just comes in and says, Hey guys, how's it going? And they're like, Andra, you guys want to go? And they're like, how did you know we were here? How did you find us? Which was a really good question, because I also wanted to know. And like, oh, I, I put a tracker on Marlena. I'm like, what? Yeah, we knew that they'd stick Marlena in the same cell they put you in for some reason. I don't know. But we knew they'd lead us straight to you. Why you would assume that? I mean, they could have just killed He-Man, and he could be under the dirt right now, but sure, let's risk the Queen's life for a very high-risk gambit. Sorry to let your mom get caught. <laughs> it was really nice of Skeletor to put us together in a family reunion, you know? Listen, I am not nice, I am not kind, and I am not wonderful. Now, he also wanted to know how Andra got in there in the first place. You know, they were in a heavy fortified palace that, you know, had guards everywhere. How did she get in there? Don't know. <laughs> Shut up. That's why. Shut up. That's why is an answer to a lot of questions in this series. I'll have you know. I wonder if they actually wrote that in the script. How did Andra get into the castle? Answer. Shut up. That's why. Why did she assume they would put Marlena in the same cell as Adam? Risk the queen's life for a gamble? Shut Shut up, that's why. <laughs> How did Skeletor cut the head off of Motherboard and put it in a jokey smurf box? Shut up, that's why. These are your modern day writing rooms, everyone. I think they have that stated on a chalkboard in big bold letters. Whenever there's a question, shut up, that's why. For once you're right. Speaking of shut up, that's why, now we go back to Gwildor, who has just finished polishing the sword that took him all of what, a couple of days to pimp out? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, a couple of hammer poundings. Then I'll soup up your sword there, He-Man. Do you need anything like dragon scales or some kind of new stone we got to find to give it more power? Nah, I'll just hook it up to a plug. Run a little electricity through it, that'll work. I think it's ready. So he fixes the sword, and now he and Orko have to run back and find He-Man to give him the sword. Now we just gotta get to He-Man. Unfortunately, they got discovered by Hordax. Hordax men are outside trying to get the power sword. <laughs> This was actually a really fun part where now Orko the White was holding his own against Hordax men pretty well. But that's impossible! 
And I have to say that Orko the White is a much better fighter than Orko the Red ever was. You better have some respect for my magic. <laughs> However, as good as he was, he still wasn't strong enough to fight off pretty much most of Hordak's men, and so he was about to get overwhelmed. I don't believe it. When he was like, Gwildor, come on, you got to fight. And Gwildor was like, with what? How? I'm a tinkerer, not a fighter. <laughs> Somebody! Or Conan says, Well, you've got a sword, don't you? You have a sword, so swing it! And Gwilda goes, Wait a minute, you're right, I do have a sword. Oh, yeah. Not only am I an inventor, but I'm also an amazing swordsman. I yeah, just forgot. So, in one of the silliest moments in this entire series, Gwilda brings up the sword like this, like, Ah! Now, did we get to see Gwildor wield the sword and fight off Hordak's men? No! <laughs> they just cut away. How do they bear past Hordak's men? Don't know. One can only imagine how- Pointing to the board again. Shut up, that's why. So, back to me and Hordak. Like I said, I did defeat Hordak. It was kind of a long fight, lasted for most of that episode. So while I did enjoy beating up Hordak, I will say though, that what followed left me with a much more bitter taste in my mouth, as I didn't even get like, what, five minutes to gloat about beating Hordak before Evelyn just magically appears in a portal? <gasps> That's right, she just magically appears as I'm like, yes! I beat you, Hordak. And then, using some kind of weird string magic, cuts off my arm, which is attached to the Havoc Staff. Oh, no! No! In a kind of a Simpson-esque sort of yoink kind of moment. Yoink! <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? See you later, Skeletor. I'm out. And she just took off <laughs> like a coward. But was I mad? No. I was like, nah, whatever. You can have it. I don't need it anyway. I don't need childish talisman anymore. I'm much more powerful without it. So how do you like them apples, Evelyn? Yeah. <laughs> so I just grew another arm using nanotechnology and continued, which I didn't really understand. I mean, the whole point of Skeletor's power was the combination of the Havoc Staff, magic, and his nanotechnology, making him both an amazing fusion of magic and technology. He's not Skeletor anymore. He's somehow synthesized both magic and technology. But if she takes my Havoc Staff, doesn't that take the magic away? No, nope, apparently not, because I still manage to keep both my magic and my technology for some reason. Why is that? Don't know. Shut up, that's why. I'm still trying to understand that one, but whatever. And so now we find Tila, the new guardian of Castle Grayskull, finally decides to show up to protect Eternia. Yay, so now with her newfound powers, she's easily, without any problem, destroying all of Hordak's army, which include a lot of the masters of the universe who are also possessed by the nanotechnology. Oh, wait a minute. Did I say she was thwarting them with ease? Oh, no, I'm sorry. She was having a really hard time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, she's got the power of Great Skull, and now has the power of the Snake Goddess, and she's somehow having a really hard time fending off Hordak's army. Now, do I have to remind you that all it took was Evelyn with the power of Great Skull to snap her fingers to blow up all of Praternia? With a thought, you could butcher King Randall from here. And now, with pretty much more power at her disposal, Tina is having a hard time. Anyway, I'm putting up the board again. Shut up, that's why. <laughs> Let's just ignore that, keep going. So now she's starting to get overwhelmed, until suddenly... <laughs> Iron He-Man arrives. Nailed it. That's right. Adam, dressed as Iron Man, comes in and saves the day. That's right. We have Adam now in the Iron Man suit made by Andra, rescuing Tila. <laughs> and so now they're back to back, fighting together against the evil forces of Skeletor, where they have this nice heart-to-heart -heart talk, which almost made me puke in my mouth. Was Adam like, where were you, Tila? Well, this whole world fell apart. And she was like, well, um, I wanted to get you a surprise. Surprise, Adam! I did it for you! What surprise? What are you talking about? And they're fighting at this time. She's like, well, you know, I know that your father died, and I thought... I thought if I restored the afterlife, I could give you some peace of mind. And he's like, what? Why? Why did you think that? I never thought of that. Tila, thank you, but 
I don't need you to do that for me. That thought had never crossed my mind. <laughs> it was not a burden or a worry to Adam the whole time. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this was just Tina's own thought. She's like, well, I, you know, I, 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 I thought, I mean, that, I look around you, Tina. You see what's happening here? That could have waited, you know? It's a nice gesture. I appreciate the thought. Don't worry, I do. But look, you know? All I need is for you to be right here beside me. Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> they really made Tila go from one extreme to the other. Yes, Tila was overbearing, she was obnoxious, she was kind of a Mary Sue. Take it back! But now you're like completely turned her upside down to like the complete opposite of all that. Like I said, there's like a middle ground there. Yeah. I'm sorry. Anyway, so Evil Ethan appears during the fight. Oh, you got the Havoc stuff! And then hands Tila the Havoc stuff. So Tila then puts them together and then explodes in magic. That's right, she just becomes like the super Tila. She grows all these horns, she becomes like horny Tila. She was kind of horny before she got the power. Do I make you horny, baby? <laughs> but she got a lot hornier after. I mean, literally, she grew horns on her head. But the power was overwhelming her. She could not contain the power. She's like, I can't hold the power, he man. She's just like a twister in the center and all the magic is going everywhere and it's tearing her apart and evil ends like we she needs more power how do we help her we need more power and i'm like why she has already too much power how's more power gonna help her but whatever she needs more power and of course that's when gwildor comes somehow having defeated hordax men i've got the power yes she says i have the power as a joke, which I actually didn't think was kind of funny. And then just throws it to Adam, who then grabs the sword and jumps through the twister, leaping from floating things to floating projectile until he grabs Tila in an embrace, looks at her, and then says, ah, by the power of Grayskull. And then, <sighs> voila, He-Man now turns into He-Man the White and Tila. Her power is now all stabilized and becomes Tila the Blue. And why? Because the power of love. Why, well, He-Man, I didn't know you cared. Control yourself. <laughs> Gag me with a spoon. He-Man and Tila sitting in a tree. <laughs> nah, whatever. So then Tila becomes more powerful and she flies the air. She says, Ready to scuttle Skeletor, champion? Should we go defeat Skeletor? And he knows, like, yeah, leave Skeletor to me. And I've got Skeletor. You go bring back Praternia. You finish what you started. Restore Praternia. And I'm thinking and going, why? If you worked together, you could have defeated me pretty easily. And you could have fixed Praternia right after. Like I said, they didn't establish like there was some kind of limited amount of time here. Anyway, so, of course, He-Man goes and finds me, Skeletor. It's over, Skeletor! We exchange horrible uncle quips back and forth. Uncle. I like my uncles once removed. You know, and then we start fighting, but of course I Skeletor don't like to fight fair. Now why would I? So I resurrect an army of monstroid machines. Monstroids attack the <laughs> From the ground to help him fight. One of the techno titans. So he may also fight me and these monsters. And also Men at Arms gets involved. And Andran are now fighting these monstroids. But of course, the good guys are having a hard time. So who comes in last minute to save the day? Well, it was completely foreshadowed. I and mean, by foreshadowed, I mean you had no idea whatsoever. Out of the blue comes an old Grinamir. That's right! They put the helmet on him and everything, and he's ready for battle. Fighting to the death. And that's right! He does actually fight to the death. He fights against one random monstroid. You know, the most powerful being, or well, one of the most powerful beings in all of Eternia, Bramia, you know, decides to fight like a normal dragon, which he doesn't have to because, you know, he's extremely powerful with magic. He could have probably handled the whole thing himself with his own magic. Granamir does not fight, Granamir wins. <laughs> Well, that's how powerful he is, but apparently has a hard time against one monstroid who ends up landing a final blow to poor Grenemia, who after all these centuries of being alive, dies a pathetic death. Silence. 
<laughs> like some random zombie creature that Skeletor just unearthed five minutes ago. Thankfully for him, Ivalin was by his side with a heart to heart moment going, Now, Ivalin, I remove you of your burden of wiping my butthole every morning. And Ivalin is crying, going, I've grown accustomed to that butthole. <laughs> I will miss it, and so Grenamir passes away. But lucky thing for Grenamir, just as his soul escapes, his soul now has a place to reside, as Tina has brought back Peternia just in time. I mean, he could have floated for another five minutes or five hours or five months, who knows, before going to Peternia, but they made it seem like it was a really important thing that Peternia had arrived just in time for his death. Didn't matter, because when she brought back Praternia, everyone was back. That's right, not only were they back in Praternia, they were back and ready to fight. Even King Randor, who came behind He-Man, is like, Is this bully bothering you again? Taz, is this bully bothering you? Get it? Because he said that at the beginning of the whole season. <laughs> And instead of actually helping He-Man, he kind of became more of a burden to He-Man as Skeletor was, like, capturing him. Yoink. But anyway, He-Man then realized, wait a minute, my sword can absorb nanotechnology. And it just so happens that Skeletor is made of nanotechnology, a fact that we had figured out probably three episodes ago. That was the whole point of going to fix up the sword. And if I point the sword at Skeletor, I can absorb his nanotechnology. Brilliant! <laughs> and so I'm like, wait a minute, that's my technology, you fool. And so, how do I, Skeletor, end? Do we end in a cataclysmic battle where we exchange blows? Do I prevent him from stealing my nanotechnology? No! What do I do? Skeletor loses by running chest first into the sword. That's right, I literally fly right into He Man's sword. No, it can't be! And paling me right to the center. Going, ah! Why did I think that was a great strategy? <laughs> I mean, I could have done a lot of different things, but going head first into his sword was probably not a good idea. But luckily for me, however, didn't actually kill me. No, being impaled by the sword didn't kill me, Skeletor. No, it only took away all my powers and reverted me back to my original state as William Shatner. Car! Car! <laughs> That's right, I Skeletor am no more. Keldor has returned. And of course, being weak in Keldor, I just got tossed in the dungeon. Which really upset me. I'm like, come on, Eva Lynn was more evil than I was. How come she gets community service? But I got a rotten cell? This is sexism, I tell you. I mean, there's gotta be a dragon out there that I can wash his butthole. Come to think of it, I'd rather take the cell. <laughs> <laughs> I, Skeletor, under no circumstance, will ever clean a butthole. At least not voluntarily. <laughs> and so crisis averted. And now Adam has a huge decision to make. Without Keldor, what will he do about the future of Eternia? Well, no worries. He solved that pretty easily. He was like, you know what? Screw the whole monarchy thing. You don't know what you're doing. That stuff's so antiquated and old. Who cares if that's the only thing of Eternians have ever known forever? And so, as of today... We decree a dissolution of Eternia's monarchy. And bring democracy to Eternia. And grant the power to all of you, our fellow citizens of Eternia. Where Andra's like, you know what? I think I'm going to run for office. I got nothing else to do. Well, you've got my vote. Marlena then turns to Adam and says, You know what? I think your father would have been proud. And I'm thinking, why? King Randall had the power to do this the whole time. <laughs> he didn't. He's probably boiling up in Paternia. He's going, what the hell are you doing? I left you in charge of being that king. I never said this. Hmm. Oh, oh well done. But we're left to believe that the king was liberal for some reason. <laughs> Sure, why not? Shut up, that's why. Speaking of shut up, that's why. Now we cut to another scene. High in the clouds in Mount Olympus, I guess a higher version of heaven. Zodak and the Council of Guardians, or as they call them, Cosmic Enforcers, who didn't exactly enforce very much. He <laughs> all hell broke loose in Eternia multiple times and Zodak didn't do nothing. I mean, I get it. He doesn't want to get involved in petty squabbles between me and He-Man, but what the hell is the job of a Cosmic Enforcer if not to enforce? Enforce means you force something to happen. You're just Cosmic Watchers. That's all you are. Anyway, so this is where we see Evil Lynn now. I mean, Good Lynn. 
<laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> In front of the Council of Enforcers going, you know what? We like the cut of your chin. We like how you used to be bad and did all kinds of atrocious things and really didn't pay any penalty for it. But at least, you know, you learned a lesson at the end and came through at the end. Sort of. Not exactly. I mean, you kind of did something good. It was okay, I guess. You know, she didn't do anything that dramatic. She just sort of helped out a little. But thank you for your contribution in helping out a little. At least if she had given up her life. You know what I mean? Some grand gesture where she gave her life for someone else. It's impossible. That could have been something, but no. She just sort of helped out a little, you know? And she didn't even want to. She was sort of guilted into it. it was like, yeah, okay, fine. So because she helped out a little and washed the diapers of a dragon for a week and a half that undoes all the evil she's ever done for all those years. This is none of my doing. And somehow qualified her to be a Cosmic Enforcer. I welcome you to the Cosmic Enforcers. It is power I want! <laughs> why? Don't know. Shut up, that's why. Oh my god. Maybe she was a diversity hire. It did seem like kind of a cock fest up there. Our higher ups are pressuring us. We really gotta get some more diversity up in here. We don't just take good people, we take evil ones too. But that's not the end, everyone. No! Right after that, there's another scene. One that actually was one of my favorite scenes in the whole series. Hordak was saved by a female version of Hordak. At least that's what it looked like. This woman has this, like, female Hordak mask on, and Hordak himself is in a watery tube, you know, like a healing tube, like from Star Wars. And she's like, don't worry, my emperor, I shall help you out. Oh, exalt. And then she takes off her mask. We don't see her face. All we see is her painted nails. But we know. That's right, everyone. We know that this is Shadow Weaver. Oh, wonderful. That's right. <laughs> nah, just kidding. I mean, it could be Shadow Weaver, but I doubt it. Most likely, it's She-Ra. Oh, boy. Which chronologically doesn't make sense as she did meet her father and her father was alive at the time. But hey. Father, my daughter. You know, whatever. Shut up, that's why. And there you go, that is the end of the series. All right, so what did I Skeletor think of this season? Well, I have to say, overall I didn't hate it. It wasn't great, I will tell you that much. I mean, I know a lot of you were like, it's really good, you gotta, you gotta give it a chance. And I watched it going, I guess the bar must be really low at this point because I didn't consider this really good. Why are you the way that you are? I mean, it wasn't offensively bad like the other one, so I'll give it that. And yes, it did have its moments, and I did like a lot of it. I actually did like the whole premise. I did like Hordak coming back, and I thought the inclusion of Keldor and me Skeletor and that stuff, I did kind of like the storyline. However, I will say the storyline was slightly overly ambitious, considering, you know, the amount of times, like I said, that they just didn't explain anything, or nothing was actually ever earth. It was like, this happens because it's time for this to happen, and then this happens because it's time for that to happen, and then there was no build-up or satisfying sort of conclusion to anything. Like that Gwildor scene, you know? How did they fight off the Horde's men? He knows how to use a sword, that's why. You know? Cut away. How did Skeletor cut off the head of one of the most powerful beings in the most anticlimactic ending of a character since Snoke? You know, off screen, just cut off her head. I mean, up until that point, Motherboard was the most imposing character. It was almost implied that she was more powerful than Hordax. Perhaps. In order to get to Hordax, he needed to get through her. It would be like in Star Wars, in order for Luke to get to the Emperor, he had to get through Darth Vader. But Darth Vader posed no threat because he went to sleep one day and Luke Skywalker just cut off his head. Very anticlimactic. I mean, could it be possible? Sure, maybe. But is it interesting writing? No. It sure is, dumb. And I'm actually going to do something I'm not usually good at doing, and that's being fair. <laughs> I'm going to be fair to the writers. Are you serious? As I do think, you know, maybe they didn't plan to show what was going on, but they only had five episodes at 25 minutes each episode, so they had to rush it all in. So that's more of a time issue and less of a writing issue, I don't know. It's not! I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt there, Kevin Smith. <laughs> Something that I said to us don't normally do. So I hope you're thankful. Awesome. I will give them at least that. Maybe they did plan on having these things explained better. Maybe they need a Snyder cut. Kevin Smith, is there a Smith cut? I did not. <laughs> We're gonna start a hashtag Kevin Smith cut with this. Because it did feel like this whole thing was rushed. 
Now, other than that, the characters, did I like Tila? I mean, I liked Tila better than I liked her in the last episode. I never would have guessed. However, well, they did make her less annoying than she was in the first, because aside from her being bait and switched with He-Man, but what made it worse was not only did you take away He-Man, you gave us an unsufferable Tila to follow. Stop whining. Maybe we could have forgiven that had Tila been a good character. You know, someone would endear us. He didn't. She was a right enough unsufferable fool. It doesn't matter what you thought. That nobody could stand. The psychopathic bitch. At least this one, she was way more likable, a lot more feminine. Coming from you, I'll take that as a compliment. A little too feminine, and this Tina would definitely not pass the Bechdel test. How dare you! <laughs> not that I care, I'm just saying. You went from one extreme to the complete opposite. There could be some balance there. You know what I mean? We don't need Tila to be completely unlikable and masculinized, but a little more feminine and slightly less love struck. Which that for me was another hard one to take. As in the first series, Revelation, there was like no inkling that she liked Adam, let alone loved him. She actually seemed hard on him. You know, when he actually died, she cared more that he lied to her than actually missing him. And when she goes to Praternia, does she thank him for his sacrifice? No, she lectures him. Let me be angry. Because I lied? Yes, because you lied. I died. And then when he says, you think I should come back? And she's like, nah, we're good. You can stay here. We just came for the sword. You know, what point did she love him? It was kind of hard to see her love there. You know what they say, love is blind. But then they had this whole sequence where they did sort of like a flashback to right before Tina becomes man at arms, training with Adam, and then Adam like, you know, trips her and grabs her on her arm and they're about to kiss. And Thanks for everything. There was none of that before, so this was a complete retcon. Which is why I kind of felt this was a little hard to take. And their love, I don't know, it was a little cringy to me. <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna talk. The only thing I love is the idea of me and Chitara hooking up. <laughs> but if I was going to pick a mate for He-Man, it definitely wouldn't be Tila. I was always partial to Frosta. For one, Frosta's really beautiful. I think they make a good couple. Number two, she's also very aggressive. You were wonderful, He-Man. Wonderful. And she made He-Man extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> Which I for once find extremely hilarious. <laughs> Look at that blushing fool. <laughs> I was more Team Froster than Team Tina. But anyway, that's really all I had. Did I like it? It was alright. Do I want to see more of these? You know? I'll be honest with you, I would like to give Netflix another try. And I do think as fans, we do like to complain a lot and nitpick a lot, which is all right. But if we're going to complain about the things that we don't like, we should also give them kudos for times when they're actually trying. Did he succeed at everything? No, but I will give him at least props for trying to at least please the fans. I think this season was a little overkill, but at least I appreciate the effort. But I will give you one thumb up, maybe a six and a half out of ten. You know, for me, Skeletor, that's not bad. By comparison, I would have given Revelation a minus two out of ten. So you did quite well, by comparison, I'd say. But anyway, let me know what you all thought in the comments. Did you like this? Do you want to see this series continue? Or would you like to see this be rebooted altogether by a different team? Anyway, that's all I have to say about this. Now, if you like my content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Shaneology. Until next time. <laughs>